Greg, you've been on holiday. Thank you so much for joining us. Did you get the hammer out? You and your mates? Uh, yes, we did, but that's the thing. I was with two of my oldest mates, all uh, tradesmen in their late 50s. They're doing finishing jobs, and we'd work hard during the day, and then you know what happens when the sun goes down. Oh, I know. And we're away from our wives. Yeah, there were uh, no wives involved, and it was man week. Okay, but you see, no wives involved means that the finishing isn't quite accurate and up to the exacting standards. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, Greg, I, I'm just I'm, I'm preempting a situation. No. I won't accept that. We ran a very professional eye over everything, and we were normally had a beer in our hand by about two in the hour. It was right, a beautiful man. holiday. Thank you for asking. I okay, go well, see the, the the other thing is is that, and I know that every woman listening is going, look, I mean, you, you men, you men, when we're together as men, and there aren't the beautiful species around, we actually go back to caveman days. There's no conversation. There's a lot of grunting. There is a lot of just simply looking, and then you know that that look means yes, you go to bar, you get another beer. There seems to be a lot less stress involved with life. Can I say that? Can I say that? Yeah. Yes, but for the fu- that is so true. But the future of human race, it's amazing the ESP we have. We just one little glance and a beer comes back from the ESP and you go, look at the sea. Yeah. Look at the fish sea. Um, but for the future of the human race, we need to get on with women. And mm-hmm. until they can find that, well, they can get that sperm extractor and I guess. Yeah. yeah. And they won't need us anymore, and they'll have robots to build things. I don't know. What what do they? We're just grateful to have them talk to us, really. Well, look, absolutely, mate. I mean, the thing is, because, we, you know, we haven't evolved, and, and, and I know that we're constantly disappointing, <laughs> but surely they get used to this over their lifetimes. Oh, yeah, we just become habitual, and they go, oh, oh that's yeah. right, he's still here. <laughs> and that's okay. That's what my, Mrs. Mardo got us a twice. She went, oh, I thought you may have left me. You'll come back. That was when I arrived home yesterday. So, yeah. And that's nice. Yeah. You feel wanted. The other thing is that when, when you get asked, so what did you talk about? Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe we didn't talk. Oh. What do you mean you didn't talk? Because oh, if women get together in a group, oh. mate, that's just incessant, and all they do is talk about us. Well, we don't talk about you. We talk about dumb stuff. Well, irrelevant stuff. Mrs. Marta, now these are two of my older friends, two non rugby friends, okay? Cole and uh, Shory. They're, well, I've been working with them on building sites for years and years and years. We know each other. Um, so Mrs. Marta said, How's Cole's wife? I don't know. I can't even remember her name. <laughs> so she's going, No, she, she had a few problems with breast cancer. Did she? I didn't know that. I, I should ask him next time. Yes. But we don't because we're not interested. We, we are kind of interested, but we're. We haven't got time. We've got other things to talk That's it. About, like you know, football. And fish. And, you know, and, and beer. All right, let's talk about that football then because tomorrow night it's all on at Eden Park. I love the fact that Dave Rennie came out at his press yesterday and he said, look, you know, we're over this. And then he went on to moan about it and say that World Rugby was... I mean, for God's sake, when you say you're over it, that means you put a full stop after it, mate. Yeah, but for someone like me, I hadn't read the papers until yesterday, so I didn't realise the World Rugby agreed with uh, with the, that it was an incorrect decision. So therefore, we won. Yeah, you won. Last week. Yeah, yeah. Having yeah. said that, oh, though, I, feel a lot better. I, I I still would like to see some actual evidence of transcript, email, or text message from because when you say World <laughs> Rugby, who exactly is that, Dave? Who were you speaking to, and exactly what did they say? World Rugby have never ever said the word wrong in their lives, and let alone was saying we were wrong in front of it. So I'm a bit, I'm still a bit suspicious. <laughs> oh, you're a stickler for detail. Man. Well, listen, what about the Harker? Has that been making news? And yeah, Rico, you are yeah. getting, getting up. Uh, yeah, well, you. Uh, did you see what Dave Rennie said about accepting the challenge? I suppose you've already talked about it on your show, but we we usually stand there and we just wear it and all the rest of it. In the old days, before World Rugby said you're not allowed to get within the 10 metres, we once tried to walk at you guys. Yeah. Sam Scott Young was throwing kisses, and I was telling him, no, don't do that anymore. You'll annoy them. But we can't just stand there. I thought the boomerang, when I saw that, I just went, that is incredible. We are harnessing some force and then moving at you. Yeah. Isn't that what, when, when you when you play Fiji and the sipper towel comes out, like, what do you do? Do you complain to them? Oh, that's not fair. You've got a harker too. We don't have a harker. We only got a little boomerang. Look, I, I just well, what it does here, I think for a lot of us now, it just reinforces that. Look, you know, I don't know when it first evolved the haka, and 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 I, from what I gather, it was used actually overseas, and it was some kind of a, you know a, a, a gesture at the end of the game or something. It needs to be that again to me. It needs to be spontaneous. It needs to be done at the end of a match. It's become part of the entertainment. It's a gimmick these days, and when it actually riles yep. players, where Rico does a throat slit and somebody else get, at that stage, it's got to be over. It's it was never meant to be that 
thank you. And it was only when Buck came back in eight, in the late 80s. That's the only time it got organised and got used as a force of to drive you guys and give you momentum at the start of the game. And we always said, we've tried every bloody thing, mate. We've tried to leave our tracksuits on. We've tried to play a boring guy called John Williamson singing Waltz and Matilda. Well, now we're trying the boomerang. We're just trying to take the sting out of it because I, and I've been saying it, and I got pilloried in 2011 during the World Cup, it's unfair. Do it if you win the game like a war yep, dance they yep. do at school sports. Simple. Just do it like that. Yep. Or do it on a Wednesday to a bunch of dignitaries so, yep. you know, when you enter the into their city. Or, I don't know, but it, it, it'd be good. TV producers love it. Mate, That's I it. sat down last Thursday and it'll be the same tomorrow night. Any girl within 100 metres of the screen will not watch the game, but they will come running for the harker because it's sexy. That's it. The harker. The harker is sexy. sexy. And that's yeah. the thing. Not if you've got to play against them 30 seconds later. It's not very sexy at all, but it is the girls and they love it. Let's talk about what we saw in Brisbane last night and at Suncorp, a pretty damn good crowd. I don't know what the numbers were. It must have been over 30,000 for the round ball. And you were telling me last night that 25,000 turned up for a women's game of football as well. They're good numbers, mate. Yeah, Australia women played Canada a couple of weeks ago in 25, same venues, 25,000 people. There's sneaky soccer fans all over the place, but they're a tad embarrassed. Um, with AFL and Rugby League ruling the roost over here and Rugby Union a third. The soccer fans stay mainly down in amongst the dark web somewhere. But when there's a good game like that, like the F- a couple of the, um, the Premier League teams played and they had 30,000 people, it's, it's incredible. There's a lot of soccer fans, but boy, jeez. As everyone says, they've got to widen the goals. Like, one nil. After all that, you get one nil. And you and I waited up too late to watch nonsense that didn't really matter. Why wouldn't it be 13-12? Why couldn't we have had, oh, geez, you see that game the other night, 13-12 it was, that actually sounds good. What's the mm-hmm. use? Well, Why isn't I'm, the goal? Okay. And even if Germany beats you by 50 goals, who cares? That's still an exciting result. Yeah, I, 50 goals. I kind of look at it like it'd be like a rugby test with 150 to 140. It can't, doesn't it devalue it a bit? I mean, what do you, what do you know about soccer anyway? Nothing, but you asked me. Okay, good point. All right, the NRL this weekend then, up the road, the Cowboys, who I know that all Brisbane fans have jumped on board. Well, not all of them, I suppose, because some of you are still bitter about the fact that Ben Hunt dropped the ball in front of the post and got you a grand final. <laughs> I can't believe a Kiwi remembers that. Yeah, That's I do, fabulous. mate. Fabulous, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'll never forget it. Uh, but I do work with uh, the wife of a player who was on the field that day, and he'll never let it go. Anyway. Um, yes, I've got my Cowboys shorts on today, so uh, I'm right in line behind them. And and their only chance, mate, of, I don't know, it'll, it'll be huge. They'll be 30, I think they fit 33,000. It's going to be 29 degrees up there, so I think they're a fair chance of winning. All right, then. So what are the plans for the week? You're back at work on Monday? Yes, I am. One week's not enough, is it? No, it's not enough. We've got a public holiday. You see, we, we've got our, we got our Queenie Day on Monday, so I know that you had yours on Thursday or something, didn't you? But we got our Queenie well, we Day. We had ours yesterday, yeah, and I'll tell you, that's not fair, having Queenie Day on a day I was already on holidays. <laughs> I want to... Are you allowed to take the Queenie Day and transfer it to next week are. when I'm supposed yeah. to be back? Yeah, yeah it's okay, sure. thank you. Yeah. Um, do you know in Melbourne, then what's happening here in Brisbane, just driving around this morning, a lot of people haven't gone to work today. Because they've decided to take Queen Easter. Ah. They've turned it into a four day extravaganza yeah, okay. of football. Yep. Okay, yeah, I like that. Very true. I bet you there's a lot of people over your way doing the same thing today, Tried going, to. see you later, four days. Might as well move into Eden Park. Well, no one I, listening. I've got a test tomorrow, mate, then the All Whites play the soccer has begun to both of these games. So let's just finally if how significant is it you know, if the Wallabies win at Eden Park, first time since eighty six, not the Bledders though, but is it still worth it and it would still be one hell of an achievement in your eyes? Oh, God, you, mate. You think about last year, uh, last week, that busted the aura. We know we're as good as you now because that was a crap team we put on the field. We had eight changes, 32-year-old playmaker hadn't played forever and he was actually one of our best. So that gave us belief. But you know what happens. We won in Perth. We got thrashed in New Zealand. We, were, I think we drew in Sydney one year, got thrashed in New Zealand. We built ourselves up and then we let ourselves down. And that's the life of an Australian rugby fan. So I don't expect a win. I expect to go really, really poorly. And hopefully something good will happen.